Proceedings of the Sisyphean Society for the Systematic Study of Useful Knowledge, Volume 1, Number 2, of the meeting having been convened the 23rd of June, 2020. The topics having been Correspondence, Scooby-Doo, and Humor. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, Kyle. How are you? Know thyself. How are you, Matt? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I think we've made a huge mistake. Oh, no. What's our mistake now? Well, let me start by saying that I think we should re-record the first issue. Oh, well, that was always inevitable, I guess. So what have you done for the last week? Um, Not much. Just work. That's interesting. Want to know what I've done? <laughs> <laughs> what I've yeah. done for the last week? <laughs> please, please share more. Well, I uh, I wrestled with with God and with issue one of this podcast. My gosh. Um. Yes. So first of all, let's address the elephant in the in the room. I right. Can't remember the first the, one, which is, it sounds like you didn't get your uh, nice new microphone yet. No, I haven't. I. I keep trying to get it off of Amazon and then I'm reminded that it's only available through Best Buy and then I, you know, don't get it. So I just want our listeners to know why they're wondering why the, why the audio is still bad that, um, although Kyle's, you know, just poured blood and sweat and tears into this for a week, uh, Matt couldn't be bothered to click buy on a website. It's true. And it's even in the name Best Buy. It, it's nice because though it, it does give me an excuse for talking the whole time again. Right. And in that way, it really is a sort of providential, even Leibnizian coincidence. Uh, you know, we, we sort of waited to the end last time to discuss the refreshments that we're enjoying at this meeting. Since we're not together, we have to just take care of our refreshments separately now. So uh, what, what are you enjoying it for the refreshments at this meeting? You know, I am having some lovely tap water uh, from a river crossing in the woods. Oh, nice. I am uh, I'm not drinking coffee this time because we're recording so late. I didn't want to be up all night long. So if we're really dull and boring this time, I'm sure that's why. Uh, <laughs> I am drinking some tap water here from uh, some, some nutmeg state tap water. And I'm also... Beautiful. Here, if I can... I went to a restaurant, if you can call this a, re a restaurant, for the first time McDonald's? since quarantine started. <laughs> Worse. Oh, wow. Uh, the problem was, so I, I thought, so I have not gone into an, any establishment, food establishment since this quarantine began. You mean you physically entered? Yes. Because oh, I, wow. I, I, ne Same. I needed some food and... Uh, my car needs an oil change because I guess it just sat there during the whole quarantine and just all the oil dried up. As the, I guess that's how oil is. <laughs> as the squirrels and rats built their nests in my car. Well, at least you were being uh, magnanimous to them. So it needed to be somewhere nearby. And uh, so my excuse is one of the few things that's nearby uh, to me within walking distance is a Dunkin' Donuts. Oh. I don't know if you're familiar know if with that establishment. I McDonald's. <laughs> Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not, it's, it certainly doesn't count as a restaurant. And I'm not sure that what I picked up there can count as food. Right. But, uh, you know, there's few things. We, we talked last week about how people really don't like poor quality audio on podcasts. And one of, the, one of the few things that annoys people even more is when you eat on a podcast <laughs> as you're recording. So, yeah, no, I see that. I can definitely see why people would feel that way. So I also have here some some Dunkin' Donuts uh, to keep me keep me keep me running during this during this meeting. Now, did you get a donut or did you get like a breakfast sandwich? Heavy quotes because it's not breakfast. Well, why don't you guess, Matt? What do you think I got? <laughs> uh... Do you think I got a breakfast sandwich, or do you think I got a donut, or do you think I got twelve <laughs> donuts? <laughs> oh no. Now, we haven't gotten to the issue yet on what is the best diet. Uh, <laughs> so I, I really don't know. Should I not be eating 12 Dunkin' Donuts? Wow. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's going to have to wait. 
Uh, you're just going to have to proceed as usual until we're able to get to that. Well, Matt, in this meeting, we had said that we were going to talk about podcasts. Uh, and we are still going to talk about podcasts, but probably not in this meeting because we found we have so many other um well, honestly, errors to correct from the last issue, as well as a bunch of uh, fun correspondence that listeners sent in that uh, I'm afraid we probably won't even get to the discussion of podcasts until our third meeting. So uh, we hope we haven't disappointed anyone. But if you would like that discussion, you can go ahead and skip to the third issue. And in this one, we will um, be talking about such fun things as errors and uh, correspondence from listeners, and a discussion on why humor is probably evil. But before we get there, um, we need to address some errata from the first issue. Good. Now, I, I think that we should just try and do this every time where we correct the errors from, from the previous issue. Um, right. So first of all, yes, the audio quality. There's all sorts of errors with the audio quality. I spent way too much of last uh, week trying to learn how to edit audio. And audio is one of those technology things that just continues to elude me. I don't know how much you've done with audio, but it's just, it's unlike really any other technology or computer related thing. Oh yeah. My only familiarity is when I was in high school and trying to do, you know, sundry video projects, uh, you know, where the only person who's any good at it is the person whose dad is coincidentally a video editor professionally. Uh huh. And yeah, trying to get even just trying to get very rudimentary things like syncing between two tracks to consistently work is a real, uh, real mystery. It is. And it's also, and it's also one of those things where it's like pretty easy to get sort of a D plus, you know, 68% good product, mm -hmm. but then like the rest is just this steep exponential Everest to climb. And what really drives me nuts about it is when you search for, for help or tutorials online <laughs> and there just isn't a consensus about what to do. I mean, some mm. people are like, Oh, use the compress, use this compressor on your audio. Oh, use this normalization, use this amplification, use this. And it's like, why, why have we not solved this problem yet? We've put a In man on ways, the moon theoretically, right. but we haven't yet figured out the optimal i guess this will have to be one of our issues what is it does seem like it's, audio? it's very naturally one of the issues <laughs> really? uh and i think well yes thank you for that uh for that wink at the reference but um there's also it's also very similar it seems to the the riddle of nutrition it's like one of the most basic mm -hmm. questions i mean that the, the question of nutrition has been going on for all of human history, presumably, and we still, you know, periodically have updates about whether eggs are killing you or the only <laughs> salvation. Right. Um, I, I so anyway, in the, in the last issue, I edited it way too much. But it was all certified by both parties, as far as I know. But here's the real trick: I left some of our mistakes in there, some of our explicit mistakes. So that, that was great. So that people wouldn't think I edited it. So Beautiful. as far as any of anyone that's ever going to know that they, they won't know that I edited that thing to pieces. Unless they are rewarded by continuing on to this episode. <laughs> Unless, of course, you cut out all of this, in which case, I guess they'll never know. Yes, we're going to be the podcast that just keeps giving, hopefully. Or the podcast <laughs> where you have to listen to every single issue for anything to make sense. Right. Uh, Slowly over time, you realize there's an entire plot, actually. Uh, but you won't be able to figure it out until you get the keys to retro interpret what's going on. So you said the issue was approved by you. Um, and when you when you uh, listened to it, you sent me a text and you said, it's hard for me to tell if this is hilarious because it's us or if it is third party hilarious. <laughs> Which I thought, That's sort of the story of my life. <laughs> I don't know if this is funny just because I have such low stakes for myself or if a normal person would find this enjoyable. Right, right. Or even an abnormal other person. The other problem is I listened to that issue so many times. I mean, probably at least 20 times that uh, I just have no 
no impressions on it anymore. I just sit there stone faced through the whole thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I was, I literally was laughing out loud in portions. <laughs> uh, well, as long as we, as long as we're entertained. Exactly. Um, now, exactly. So one of the kinds of things that I had to cut out was I need a better pop filter on my microphone. I have one on mm. there currently, but I guess it's not good enough because my P's are still very powerful. As an aside to the listener, this is exactly why I supposedly keep <laughs> having a problem with buying the microphone. I know if I wait long enough, Kyle will figure out every single problem with the microphone and will eventually get to the microphone I should actually buy. <sighs> what a what a tricky co-host you are. <laughs> So tricky. Uh, now people say online, oh, you don't need to buy an, a pop filter. You can make your own. Oh, all, you, no. all, you, all you need is an embroidery hoop and a pair of pantyhose. <laughs> you know, those common <laughs> also. So I think, all right, I'll just go over to my drawer of pantyhose and then I'll go over to my cabinet of embroidery hoops and I'll just whip up a little pop filter. Wow. <laughs> Beca- but then, of course, there was the fire. In which you lost all of your pantyhose and embroidery hoops and and nothing else. What are the chances? What are the chances? So because of the the pop filter problems, I actually had to cut out a bunch of my own laughter from the last issue. Because as I so if you're wondering why, you know, I wasn't laughing at Matt's jokes, <laughs> it's because I just cut all that out. Nice. Uh, and so then my I, jokes always are falling flat. Yeah, and then I just crank up the volume on your laughter. Great. Okay, great. So I just sound even more delusional than reality would suggest. Now, Fair enough. Another problem, and I don't know if this is because of the pop filter or just because of the way I speak as a human being, but it picked up a lot of lip smacking like that. So now I hesitate to mention all these because we're drawing attention to them and now people will hear all of these problems if they weren't already. But... I want the people who heard them to know that I'm aware of the problem and I'm trying to change. We're on it. Uh, Also, I feel like I say your name a little bit too much in the the first issue. I'm saying Matt like every other sentence. But that's because I want to be clear about when I'm addressing you and when I'm addressing the listener. I don't want anyone to get confused. The listener is the default. So, you know, if we want to do direct address, I think it makes sense to use the the names. I agree, Matt. We also, for some reason, said brilliant about 25 times. Holy cow. I don't know why we, I didn't actually count, but we were really hung up on that word. So we'll... Because were we using it sarcastically for the most part? Well, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? Mm, that is the brilliance of it. So anyway, I made some rules for myself to try to improve my recording this time around, and I have five rules, and I don't know, you might want to adopt these for yourself. Rule That's number subtle. rule number one is don't laugh. Rule number two is don't be mean. Because I said a couple things and listening back to them, I thought, ah, it's a little too mean. I should probably take that out. Like I called the listeners thankless at one point. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that. And I wouldn't want them to know that I had ever said that. Right. Um, my third rule is don't be too self-deprecating. Right. You know, if, if we're too, too, too honest about that, then people might start taking us seriously. Right, or see through it into our deeper narcissism. My fourth rule is don't use filler words like um or uh. I went and cut a bunch of those out. Uh, And I just can't spend the time to do that kind of editing again. So now I'm just resolving to never say um again. That's the power of promising to try. Um, And my fifth rule is just a general uh, never make mistakes. Right. That's probably the most important rule in the sense that it encompasses the others. I, okay, so a few other errata. Um, I said in the last issue that when, once we were able to pay our voice actors and our musicians and our writers and everything, we would be, quote, in the background swimming through our po- our pools of golden coins. Of course, right. I and meant to say... coins are no longer minted as gold. Oh, is that also is that also true? Well, at least in United States standard currency... We well, I guess we could just gold. get old ones. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Go no, ahead. I just didn't want to have a, an error on top of the error here. Fair enough. It makes for some very confusing minutes. Um, no, right. I should have said gold coins, not golden coins. Because they're coins of gold, not they're... coins that are gold colored. Right. Or, or maybe you were referring to 
like gold colored Sacagawea dollars or whatever they are now. Who knows if Sacagawea is still on it, but you know, gold colored coins. I'm afraid I wasn't, but um, oh, okay. yeah, so I, I deeply regret that error. Um, I, I said later on when I was talking about working in the school newspaper, mm-hmm. I said, quote, I was a group of, it was like <laughs> two or three people. Now, I just wanted the listeners to know that I was not actually myself a group of two or three people. Um, I, I just wanted to be clear about that. <laughs> See, now I got to cut out this laughing. Uh, we're about to talk about why we shouldn't laugh anyway. Um, so I just wanted to pe- let people know that. <laughs> Sorry. One of our listeners actually caught this uh, error. So thank you to my friend and our listener, David. David sent me a text that said, (laughs) (laughs) and actually one of our listeners and my friend, uh, David caught this and reported this error to us. So thank you. Holy cow. Uh, He texted me and said, you said, quote, I was a group of two or three people. He said, you should do an episode on causal schizophrenia. (laughs) Uh, Wow. I replied to him and I said, I did catch that mistake and will apologize for it in the errata in the next, in in the second issue. Oh man. I wish you had said, and we will apologize for it. (laughs) That would have been good. Um, David said, no, don't apologize for it. Consider making an episode of making sense of the times we misspeak. Oh, that's a great idea. Well, David, we don't have episodes, but we do have issues. And I'm afraid almost every issue is probably an attempt to make sense of the times we misspeak. <laughs> wow. Then that David, was beautiful. Then David said, or do apologize and give me public credit. Either option is fine with me. Well, so at least he gave us options. There is your public credit as insofar as the public knows about this. Have I met David? Uh, I believe so. He came Why and visited um, school. He's, he's also a bearded uh, gentleman. Good, good. Like himself. Um, so, Matt, this is a, a mistake that you made. Okay. You said that life hacking had become about, quote, how inefficient you can do something. I'm sure, of course, you meant to say how inefficiently you can do something. Yes. And I'm sure you deeply regret the error of mistaking adjectives and adverbs. Deeply regretted. Now I made another mistake. I said, "Wait, well, well, I have to say there is another route that we could take on these, which is that uh, we meant everything that we said, or that the recording failed at particular times. You know, we don't want to leave that out, especially for those in the audience who are prone to that kind of correction." Well, that seems like a rather um, dishonest route, but it does. That's a great point. I, speaking of dishonesty, a, a mistake, another mistake I made when we were talking about the XKCD comic. Yes. And we talked about how to make the title text pop up. Mm-hmm. I said, quote, you can hover your mouse over the comic and title text pops up. Now, mm. of course, what I should have said was you can hover your cursor or your pointer over the comic. Right. Putting the mouse on top of the comic probably actually, just won't do anything. Yes. Actually picking up and hovering your mouse over the comic will not work. I just didn't want any of our listeners to be confused about that. Right. Unless you're comic, unless you're using like a touch screen, that's also physical, you know? Um, so I made another mistake when I said, I said to the listener, I'll list you some of these things. Uh-huh. I'm not sure list can be used like that. Now, Matt, you're something of a grammarian, but we only have an hour to prepare for these, so I couldn't get into all the the um, specifics about transitive or intransitive verbs or all that sort of thing. But I think I should right. have said I will. I'll list for you some of these things instead of just and I'll list you. We should put in the minutes uh, that we would benefit from somebody buying us the Cambridge G- English Grammar that's like five hundred dollars. Uh, if anyone wants to sponsor that sounds good to me uh i i said later on that the second category of discussion topics i said the second category are fun topics of course that confuses number i should have said the second category is fun topics so i deeply regret that error 
When I gave out the telephone number, I forgot to give the first digit of it, which is awfully US centric of me. I should Mm. have given you the, the nation, the national code. So our international listeners would know what country to call. So that first digit is national listeners. That first digit is a one. So it's one eight zero five five three eight two three eight two. Um, and then Matt, the, the last error was again, yours. You said at the end of the meeting, quote, we might as well motion to adjourn. Of course, I'm sure you meant we might as well move to adjourn. Right. Since move is the verb and, and motion is the noun. <clears throat> so anyway, we deeply regret all of those errors. And um, I, I believe that covers it. Great. Now, uh, we do have, you just mentioned the minutes from last time, which we should uh, approve. Now, I have my copy of Robert's Rules of Order here. I just wanted to check to make sure we were doing this correctly. And uh, a, a form, it says I'm on page 354 for those who'd like to follow along at home. This is in Robert's Rules of Order, newly re- revised 11th edition. And it says on line 23, a formal motion to approve the minutes is not necessary, although such a motion is not out of order. So basically, you can just ask, are there any corrections to the minutes, as I ask now? And then hearing none, I can say, there being no corrections to the minutes, the minutes stand approved. Wow. So Isn't that the brilliance of Robert's rules? It is. Look how efficient that is. Um, <clears throat> now, we should, at this point, also just make a couple quick announcements. Uh, the first uh, announcement I think we should make is, I think we should um, let people in on how many people have listened already? Yes. Now, later on... I would love for people to be let in on that. <laughs> now, once, of course, once <clears throat> this show becomes popular enough, this will be like a trade secret, and we won't be able to say how many listeners we have, probably. Right, except to advertisers right. on rare occasions. Uh, but we just published issue one earlier this very day, so it's only been up for a few hours. And as I refresh the statistics now, we have a total <laughs> of unique <laughs> downloads... 43. Wow. Which uh, is actually more than I, <laughs> that sounds uh, pathetic, but when you think about it, we're not in any of the directories yet. You can't find us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere. So it's right. just, um, now of course, about, well, three or four of those are me because I tried this on every device I have to make sure it worked. And, uh, you know, a couple of them are my, my family members that I guilted into listening to it, but still, even then, it seems like between the two of us, we now know that we have about 12 friends. That's pretty good. It is. And even if this is a high watermark, both in terms of podcast listeners and friends, I feel like this is a you know satisfying place. Agreed. Um, at this point, we should have the treasurer's report. And Matt, you are the treasurer. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, treasurer update. The coffers remain sort of steady uh, and with very few inflows and outflows. Well, except for all the outflows that you don't know about yet. Oh, I see. Uh, th- so really, this is me informing the <clears throat> the treasurer that uh, our status is not good. Oh, no. We are just hemorrhaging money. Oh, fact, no. The first issue was bigger in file size than it should have been. So oh, I had no. to upgrade our podcast hosting plan already. Oh, so no. we are really going to have to set up our online uh, donation system because we are we are just nose diving into bankruptcy. Fair enough. Okay. Well, then we'll we'll definitely have to get on that. We will provide that link at a post haste. Now, the moment everyone's been waiting for, only twenty six minutes in or so. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't say timestamps because then people will know when we've cut things out. That's a great point. <laughs> uh, they they won't get to hear that whole very interesting take that Matt had on um, on who's really in charge. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Just in the middle of your discussion about David. Uh, so the moment everyone's been waiting for, general correspondence. Correspondence that mm. has been sent in to the society since our last issue was published. Um, now we'll get to voicemail in a second. That's really our main official one. But because it was announced by a Facebook, we do have some Facebook related, uh, general correspondence that got back to us. Right. Um, and you know, before I even get to that one, one of the first ones was a text from my friend, uh, Mark, who started by saying your pot quote, your podcast was very interesting. <laughs> now, Mark, like me is from Minnesota. And I don't know if this is a, a national thing or just a Minnesota thing, but interesting there is what you say when it wasn't good, but you want to be nice. 
Right. British in a way. Uh, however, he does follow it up with, I had quite a bit of fun listening, despite your warnings to turn me to more productive activities. Wow, that is so confusing from a cultural perspective. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Mark. We appreciate it. We're glad to know interesting apparently meant at least quite a bit of fun. Two kudos to Mark. <clears throat> uh, my brother's friend Tyler uh, commented and referenced my brother and said, LOL, which is, I guess, some youth internet slang. Your yeah. bro started a podcast. This is amazing. I can't wait until he has you on as a guest. Wow. So already people are just clamoring to replace us, basically. Right. People as far flung as your brother's friend, even. Now, I guess, I guess Tyler's also my friend. He was, he was at the um, very well-orchestrated bachelor party that I threw for my brother. Wow. Nice. Uh, or quinceanera party. Um, now, David, the, same, the very same, who texted with that correction, wow. left a comment yeah. and said, consider me a loyal fan. <clears throat> So I do think we should consider that. And where's my, my pen? I'm writing this down. David was our official first fan. So, yeah, I'm seeing that now. So, I'm changing my uh, react to care. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, one of our mutual friends from grad school, Hannah. Now, this gets a bit a bit complicated. But she commented and said, I'm mortally offended that you have not chosen to make a podcast with me. And by the way, these people didn't know that their comments were going to be read, but I guess I guess this will learn them. Indeed. Um, uh, you know, I'm not saying their last names, so this could be any Hannah that went to grad school with Matt and myself. Any of the sundry Hannahs. Actually, there were multiple. Um, that would still be Facebook friends <laughs> with one or both of us. So anyway, anyway, Hannah from Wisconsin writes, quote, I'm mortally offended that you have not chosen to make a podcast with me. I responded and told her, you know, don't be offended. I said the segment starting at 5103 is just what you need to hear. It's our call for another co-host. So I told her, you know, go listen to that part. <clears throat> um, and I just said, you're going to want to stop listening before we reveal that it's really just a ploy to find Matt a wife. And then things really sort of went off the rails because Hannah then replied with a personal attack about my religious affiliation. Yeah. And then um, <clears throat> one of my, uh, actually my friend Mark, who, wow, you see how this is sort of all, we really do just have these 12 friends, I guess, who are. Right. Because this is Mark's wife now, Jen, uh, comments uh. and says, Kyle, uh, you don't want a wife too? And then you very kindly replied and said he's laying down his life for his friends. I was going to say, <laughs> I would not be willing to marry the kind of person who would lower herself to being on this program. But I thought your <laughs> reply was much nicer. <laughs> Then, Fair enough. <laughs> then our mutual friend William comes in and tries to recruit Hannah to start a rival podcast. And I, you know, I complain about this. And then William tells me the podcast world is dog eat dog, Kyle. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. So I, I have my pen here. And if I've written David down as our first fan. I'm now going to write down William as the first enemy of the society. I would like to note that just a few minutes after that, I responded to William with, uh, you are so on. So yes. He's been warned. <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't sure what that meant. Actually. I weren't, wasn't sure if you were addressing William or Hannah. Oh, sorry. I meant, I meant William. Oh, okay. No, Hannah's not on the podcast, <laughs> although she could be, I mean, I, you know, we're uh, not, we're not putting that off. One of my friends now, now we get the friends who didn't listen to it yet, but commented. Well, let's be honest. Probably none of those people listen to it either. Um, right. But my friend Hans commented and said, looking forward to listening to it. Now, I feel sort of bad for these people who haven't listened to it yet and are just, mm. oh, I have my hopes up. I guess I'll sad react. Uh, my, my friend John replied similarly and said, we'll check it out. Uh, my friend Nathan likewise said, I'm in. Haven't even listened to it yet, but I know I'm in. Now, Nathan later sent me a follow-up uh, private message and said, the moment I heard the intro on your podcast, I knew it was you. The more things change, the more they stay the same, which by which I'm sure he referred to the very bad MIDI fake keyboard computer playing music playing at the beginning. Uh, and he's just telling me I haven't <laughs> do gotten you have a reputation that precedes you on bad <laughs> MIDI keyboard. I, I do. I'm a well-known bad <laughs> MIDI keyboardist. Uh, good, and then, and then it struck me, Nathan actually is a musician. So I, oh. I'm trying to, to twist his arm to re-record, And I told him we would pay him in, um, What's the fake thing? Exposure. That we, exposure. We would pay him exposure. Uh, and then my friend uh, Chris commented and said, this is gold. Now, again, I'm guessing he hasn't actually listened to it yet. 
Um, but he did say gold instead of gold in. So well done. So he, it's really a subtle dig in a way. Right. Um, now the really interesting, uh, uh, feedback and the stuff we actually encourage is the voicemail feedback. So our first, our very first, right, because just for, just for the record, that's not on the official society page. Right. That's just on our personal Facebook. Exactly. The society doesn't even have a page. The society is too old fashioned to be into social networking. Right. Unlike us. The, so uh, our very first voicemail message was from, well, he'll introduce himself. Hello, Matt and Kyle. This is your best friend, George, and I have a question for you. So you mentioned that Looney Tunes could be a possible option. Now, I don't like Looney Tunes that much. I think it's for children. But one of the things I, I really like is Scooby-Doo, the adventures of Scooby-Doo and the, the whole gang and the, of the mystery machine. And I, I just wanted to let you know that if you were – well, ask you both – that if you were parents, would you allow your children to join the Scooby-Doo gang and go on mystery-solving adventures with them? You know, I don't know. seems like a good use of their time at least. So, you know, what would you guys say? Wow, what a great question. Uh, now, I'm here's my pen again. I'm adding, apparently, George is our best friend. So I'm writing, this is getting to be a lot to keep track of. So we have David the fan, we have William the enemy, and then we have George, our best friend. And can we organize them just as, like, contacts as well? And maybe put further categories of positive, negative? Sure. Okay. I don't know what that means, but sure. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's get to the substance of, of George's question. Yeah. I, I may go on for too long about this, so Matt, why don't you respond first? Very well, then. Uh, this is a pretty easy question to resolve for me. If I were a parent, there is no way that I would let my children just pal around in the mystery machine. Hmm. Uh, you know, my children are, you know, there's, there, there's there. First off, there's a question of how old are your children, right? Um, your children are only of a certain age until you basically can't direct them towards uh, joining people in vans or not. Um, and basically, the entire time that I am in charge of making sure my children don't go into vans, I'm not going to let them into the Mystery Machine van. The people in the Mystery Machine... Uh, you know, seem like good-hearted kids, uh, but their lifestyle is uh, ambiguous at best. <laughs> what they do for money or uh, work or um, religious life is left very vague, if mm -hmm. not implied that they're basically just bums who mm -hmm. wander around getting into trouble and hoping for the, you know, generosity of more productive members of society. Wow. It's very evident that there is a serious drug problem happening with at least one of the members uh, that also involves his dog. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get too into the details of that, but given the hippie vibes of the van, uh, there's no way my children are going anywhere near it. Wow. Well, if our listeners didn't already know which was the cool dad on this program... And which was the, the cooler, the stiff. <laughs> now we Fair. know. Uh, Go ahead, cool dad. <laughs> take us away. Well, unfortunately, my answer is not very, uh, not very cool. Um, first of all, <clears throat> Scooby Doo, the cartoon, is it? It's 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 funny. What are the chances George would bring up this of all the cartoons? First of all, I've never talked about Scooby Doo with George before. But it is, hands down, my go-to least favorite cartoon. Are you serious? And you can it's ask, a great cartoon. Oh, no. Well, there ends the podcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> this was a fun little experiment. But uh, you can, and I'm not just, I'm, I have, I have, I'm not just flip-flopping here for political gain. I have had this view for a long time. We could get my childhood friend Timothy on here, and he can tell you how I have always known that Scooby-Doo was garbage. What do we mean by garbage exactly? <laughs> well, thanks for asking. So first of all, it's in a category of cartoons that already has points running against it. It's one of the old Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Uh, and yeah. I don't really like 
almost any of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons. So far, and, you're definitely right. They're and I'm not trash. alone in that. I mean, if you look it up, everyone kind of goes, yeah, those were sort of the cheap. And for George to compare him to Looney Tunes, I mean, Looney Tunes is like Emmy Award winning. Well, I'll get into uh, that in a moment. I don't know. But, I, I see the comparison. But no. also, did Hanna-Barbera do the Jetsons? Because I loved yes. the Jetsons. Yeah, I mean, they, they had some some things that are better than others. I mean, they did the Flintstones, too. Okay, um, yeah. But, My uh, dad so, loves that one. So I don't like the animation style. I don't like the writing. I don't think it's funny. It has, I if it I remember hilarious. correctly, if I remember correctly, it has a laugh track, doesn't it? It definitely has a laugh track. As if Scooby-Doo is recorded in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> Which is like a fantastic meta. <laughs> uh, I About the only thing cheesier than Scooby-Doo that I can think of is, is, Scrap, is Scrappy-Doo. Oh God. Which I must assume George also likes. Now, another thing I don't like about it. Well, okay. And I'm not the only one, by the way, this is from the Wikipedia article. So you know, it's true. Mm. Um, it says like many Hanna-Barbera shows, the early Scooby-Doo series has been criticized at times for their production values and storytelling. In 2002, Jamie Malinowski of the New York times mm-hmm. commented that quote, Scooby-Doo's mysteries are not very mysterious and the humor is hardly humorous. As for the animation, well, the drawings on your refrigerator may give it competition. Oh my gosh, So I'm I'm not alone in this. Um, But perhaps my biggest complaint is that it is so formulaic that if you have seen one episode of Scooby-Doo, you've already seen all 700 of them or however many there are. Right. And in fact... It is relatively formulaic, but I'm not sure that it's totally worthless. Oh, it's formulaic. I, in fact, I was starting to write up my own little formula that I was going to read here where I thought mm. I can just describe what happens in every single episode. But you know what? I checked the Wikipedia entry for Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Which is the original uh-huh. cartoon. Right. And it already has a section, which is kind of interesting for Wikipedia, where they have broken it down into six things. And this is, I mean, you'll hear, this is how formulaic it is. Number one, the gang is driving in the mystery machine, either returning from or going to a regular teenage function when their van breaks down for any variety of reasons, overheating, flat tire, out of gas, in the immediate vicinity of a mostly vacated, a large, mostly vacated property, ski lodge, hotel, factory, mansion. Number two, their unintended destination turns out to be suffering from a monster problem, ghosts, yetis, vampires, witches, etc. The gang then volunteers to investigate the case. Number three, the gang splits up to cover more ground with Fred and yeah, Velma. Yeah, see, that finding, is a critical mistake that they with, often make. With Fred and Velma finding clues, Daphne finding danger, and Shaggy and Scooby finding food, fun, and the ghost slash monster who chases them. See, I'm not sure that that's right, because I feel like Velma is often separated, and Daphne and Fred are supposed to be an item. I did, I did wonder about that when I read this, and I also thought, you know what? If you were going to make a, a show where you knew like every episode you were going to have them split up, gang, right. wouldn't you have made it an even number of people? Yeah, that is a really interesting point. Well, in fact, it is an even number of people. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Scooby doesn't count as a person. Right. Well, that gets to a maybe larger question of personhood that is beyond the scope of this podcast. True. We don't want to get into philosophy. Uh, Number four, eventually enough clues are found to convince the gang that the ghost slash monster is a fake. And this is how specific it is. Fred then develops a much too complex trap to capture it, only for it it invariably to go awry. Alternatively, the gang calls the local sheriff only to get stopped by the villain halfway. Number five, Mm. eventually the ghost slash monster is apprehended and discovered to be disguised. Once unmasked, the ghost slash monster turns out to be an unsuspected authority figure or otherwise (laughs) innocuous local who is using the disguise to cover up something such as a crime or a scam. And by the way, they skipped this, but there's a little moment in there too, where you do the running through the hallway scene where you go in doors on one side and come out a door on the other side of the hall. Yep. That's like every single episode. It's pretty Um, great, too, because there's always the stock joke of, hey, that didn't actually make any sense. Yeah, it's hilarious when you see it for the 200th time. It is. It's It's funny every time. And then number six, after giving the parting shot of, and I'd got... Would have gotten away with it, too. I'd have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for those meddling kids. And your stupid dog. The offender is then taken away to jail, and the gang is allowed to continue on the way to their destination. 
there. Now, if you haven't seen Scooby-Doo before, you have now seen every single episode. You know, but it really is worth going back and watching just a few hundred uh, <laughs> because they're pretty great. And I love Scooby-Doo and no. I will never stop loving it. I, I, there are two episodes that I can endorse. Okay. Um, here they better a, not be the movies. The movies are not Scooby Doo. No, it's not a movie. It's not. It's also Good. not from the original series. Oh. Okay. Um, so here's a clip I'm going to play. Features Scrappy. Uh, oh no. Okay, here's a clip okay. I'm going to play for you. It's from uh, episode season one, episode ten of the show Scooby Doo and Guess Who. Oh. So this is this is one of two clips Scooby Doo related clips that I can uh, um, endorse. Hi there! Welcome to Weird Al's All Accordion Marching Band Camp. Wow! Famous singer songwriter Weird Al Yankovic! <laughs> Scooby and I have been dreaming about coming here for years! Yeah, years! Mr. Yankovic, why is everyone leaving? Please call me Weird Al. So uh, that's the first one. And the second one uh, isn't even from a Scooby Doo cartoon. And this is, this is bizarre, but it's from a cartoon called Batman The Brave and the Bold. Hmm. And it's from season two, episode 25, which is titled Bat Might Presents Batman's Strangest Cases. And in this episode of Batman, okay. it's about Scooby-Doo working with Batman and Robin to solve a mystery. And so I'm, I'm just going to play this little clip for you. It's only a couple seconds. This is from the very beginning. The gang is approaching a, uh, um, a theater. And so then they're commenting on the name that's on the marquee of the theater as they approach. Like, there he is, Scoob, our favorite wacky songster, Weird Al Yankovic. Another one writes the rest. <laughs> there you go. So uh, those are the two Scooby-Doo related things that I can endorse. Hello, this is Kyle, the audio editor of the proceedings coming to you from the future. I am just needed to interject here with an editorial comment. Hopefully interjecting like this is not a thing that a habit that we get into because it's already taken me too long to edit these things. But I noticed while listening back to the proceedings that we just played those Scooby-Doo clips and didn't comment much on them, which is probably illegal. Uh, we need to comment on them enough that it will qualify as fair use and we won't get sued by the who I assume are the highly litigious Warner Brothers. So I'm just going to interject quick with a few comments so that we're, uh, we're in the clear. So the first clip was from Scooby-Doo and Guess Who? I'll just say this. Note how it fits into the formula that we were discussing. Well, in this case, I'm not sure whether the van was or the gang was headed to a regular teenage function, but they were driving through the Rocky Mountains when they just happened to stumble upon Al's accordion camp. And wouldn't you know it, because all the campers have left, it's now a, quote, large, mostly vacated property. Why must these places always be vacated? Can this gang not solve mysteries when other people are around? Seems suspicious. Now remember step two said their unintended destination turns out to be suffering from a monster problem. Well, in this case, Al's all accordion band camp has been overrun by, yes, dinosaurs. Shaggy says that uh, he and Scooby, now here I wanted to add this as a bit of, of cutting analysis. Shaggy uh, says that he and Scooby, quote, have been dreaming about coming here for years. And yet, Shaggy is clearly holding under his arm, not an accordion, but a concertina. So although they've allegedly been dreaming about this accordion camp for years, apparently this little segment of the mystery solving gang couldn't be bothered to solve the mystery of what an accordion is. And by the way, if one of our listeners could add this error to the uh, inconsistencies, continuity errors, or in goofs section of the Scooby-Doo fandom wiki, that would save me a lot of time. The link is in the minutes. Okay, that should be enough commentary on that one, I think. The second clip was, again, from Batman, the Brave and the Bold. Just after the clip that you heard, Batmite, a bizarre Batman character in his own right, he appears and says, quote, Scooby-Doo, Batman, and Weird Al? It's the holy trinity of pop culture. Uh, however, I was under the impression from season four, episode 13A of the animated television show Johnny Bravo, that it was Don Knotts, the Blue Falcon, and Weird Al Yankovic, who were the holy trinity of pop culture. So that might require further investigation. So anyway, let's see how this episode works with the formula. Um, we don't see the van, but they are going to a theater to experience a Weird Al concert, which, if not a regular teenage function, certainly should be a required one. 
Now, remember, according to step one of the for- of the terrible formula, the gang is supposed to end up in the, quote, immediate vicinity of a large, mostly vacated property. In this case, they walk into the theater, a large property, and wouldn't you know it, it's mostly vacated. In this case, everyone has been scared out of the theater by the footlight phantom. Now, this time, I do have to give the episode some credit because they break with the formula a bit and they immediately unmask the phantom, and it's none other than the Joker. So they remove the phantom mask, they reveal the Joker, who's essentially a man under another mask, and then the penguin shows up, and then the villains tie up the gang and place them in giant scales of justice hanging over a pool of sharks. Um, I'd also just briefly like to add this insightful commentary from the Scooby-Doo fandom wiki. Quote, it's debatable whether this episode should be considered canonical. The gang is placed in a death trap that hinges on Scooby eating a large quantity of Scooby snacks. If he does, a scale will go up, and on the other side, the whole gang will be lowered into a shark tank to die. Scooby says that he can't help himself and begins to eat while his friends plead for him to stop. That crosses a moral line the real Scooby would never cross. Unquote. Mmm, Scooby standards. Batman and Robin then show up and save the day, but then returning to that old formula that says, quote, Fred then develops a much too complex trap to capture the villains only for it to invariably go awry. Well, that happens. They do, however, get into a fist fight then, so at least that's different. And then Weird Al, did you forget he was in this? He ends the fight by slamming an accordion onto the Joker's head. So there are a few deviations from the formula here. And I guess what this teaches us is that all you need to do to make Scooby-Doo interesting is either put him in a different cartoon made by other people or um, add superheroes and comedy recording artists from other universes. So anyway, that should be enough commentary to uh, save our coffers. Again, folks, please go purchase these uh, media properties. I'm sure the, the Warner Brothers could really use the money. Now back to the proceedings. There is a third. There, there's no audio to it, and it's very brief. It's just a visual cameo. But uh-huh. in season two, episode 11 of Duck Dodgers, which is a Looney Tunes show, which is one of the greatest cartoons of all time, the, mm. the Duck Dodgers TV show, um, they make an appearance in that episode. Is so, it also Weird Al adjacent? No, this is this is just this is just the the Scooby Doo gang being in a, a real cartoon made by Warner Brothers in a different cartoon. Okay, yeah, hmm, um, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like there's no argument about uh, whether or not Scooby Doo is formulaic. It's very formulaic, uh, but I do think that it's a it's a pretty great show. I mean, like. The repeating gags are themselves just so great in their repetition, right? Like Velma dropping. It, it, yeah, it's, it, it's hilarious. It, to some degree, it seems like the very fact that it's so ingrained in pop culture has to count towards it, right? What's more iconic than Velma dropping her glasses and being unable to see without her glasses? And then, of course, she ends up feeling up the monster by accident and she puts on her glasses usually with the help of Shaggy or someone, and... (laughs) Apple pie. (sighs) Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, So, anyway, that that was all just about... What I thought George was going to ask was um, Mm -hmm. whether we would let our kids watch the show. I thought that was where it was going as well. And there, so clearly the answer for me is clearly a no. And Looney Tunes is far superior. Okay, we're going to have to have an issue about Looney Tunes, but... Um, those are theatrical shorts. They played in the theater. They won Emmys. They are beautiful, creatively animated. They have hand painted backdrops, classical musical scores, performances by the greatest voice actor of all time, Mel Blanc. They are wonderfully written. They are actually funny. I think Looney Tunes should be a part of every young person's moral formation. And anyway, I don't want to spoil that. We'll get to that at some point. Well, I can't agree, but maybe I'll be persuaded by the time we get to it. Now, so would I let them join the actual mystery gang? Well, first of all, Matt, I hadn't thought about the inviting kids into a van part. That was a good insight. Thanks. Um, I'm not keen on my child joining any gang, uh, mysterious or not. So that sort of puts me off from the start. But I did spend uh, most of my hour research time looking into this. Mm. And uh, I did also find on the Wikipedia article, and this gets at a little bit of what you were saying. It says, quote, older teenagers and adults have admitted to enjoying Scooby-Doo because of presumed subversive themes, Uh which involve theories of drug use and sexuality. In particular, that Shaggy is assumed to be a user of cannabis and Velma is assumed to be a lesbian. 
Yeah, I've never understood why Velma was supposed to be a lesbian, and I felt like it was always just that she wasn't as pretty and wore glasses, which is kind of offensive. It it is. Uh, but is there more evidence than that? I mean, I feel like that's why. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't go down that particular rabbit hole. Fair um, enough. But I also think um, I probably wouldn't uh, let my kids, I would tell them they should really be doing something more important with their lives. I would probably tell them to go listen to the first issue of this podcast, for example. Right. And I would also say we should really be leaving the mystery solving to duly appointed detective forces and put a stop to this rampant vigilantism. Um, it's dangerous think, and destabilizing, just like the 60s it represents. Do you think the mystery gang is ultimately accountable to any sort of democrat, democratically elected bureaucracy? I don't think so. I think there is no sort of uh, who watches the mystery gang. No. Now, George also left a Facebook comment, and he said, I'm fine with being an occasional guest host, Kyle. You know how to reach me. Now, uh, now I'm not sure that I want a Scooby-Doo apologist on this show, especially since if I already am dealing with one, apparently. Right. Uh, but also, you know, George, we, we might have to take him up on that, although he's not exactly in the the, the target co-host demographic that we had asked for. Right. No. He, he, he lacks a, a few key features. He would kind of be another uh, white millennial male. Right. Um, so... You know, this, that, that's what will happen if people don't speak up. I guess George will become the co-host and um, democracy dies in darkness. Now, there is another, uh, thank you, George, for, the, for your inaugural voicemail message. There is a nut, see, I just remembered my rule, which is don't be mean. I didn't want to Good. be too mean to George. Now, another voice message. Um, I'll go ahead and play for you here. Kyle, this is your mother. <laughs> and I'd like to be on your podcast. Yes, please. Um, and I also need to be reminded of what Sisyphean means. And, of course, I need your instructions on how to play your podcast so I can hear uh, how wonderful it is. So good luck to you and Matt. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be lots of fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, she's right about one thing. It's going to be lots of fun. Well, uh, yes, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, first of all, now you're on the podcast, mom. So thank you. Uh, she says she needs to be reminded what Sisyphean means. Now, unfortunately, now she doesn't know this because as we'll get to in a moment, it sounds like she hasn't actually listened to the first issue yet, but, mm. um, you know, our rules of decorum really frown upon us talking about the society itself. So we really shouldn't be talking about that, but I will say this, obviously you can Google it, but there's an interesting phenomenon, Matt, and I don't know if you've tried this. If you do a, a Google or use a, a, a more ethical search engine and search for Sisyphean spelled the correct way, the way we have done it. Google will not show you those results. It will change your search to Sisyphean spelled the incorrect way, E-A-N. And so we are essentially invisible to anyone searching the web. Wow. We should call our podcast Invisibilia. <laughs> Now, first of all, I don't know if there's a word for that phenomenon. If there isn't, I think we should coin a term for that to describe Visibilization. Yeah, or, or Sisyphean. You just got Sisyphean. Boom. Um, now, you got at first, at first I thought we should send our listeners on, this will be the first mission we assign, is help us you know, fix this about Google. But then I thought, actually, this is kind of cool because it, it helps us sort of stay underground. And the people who are trying to find us, I mean, Google won't even let them find us. It's the perfect, the perfect ploy. And regarding the spelling, by the way, the E-A-N, uh, hip, cool, new spelling, that did not come around until 1635. So it's basically uh, contemporary. And even then it was the, you know, A-E ligature. I forget what that's called, mm. um, where the A and the E are combined. So it was yeah. that A-E thing and then A-N. Um, Whereas the correct original I-A-N ending is from 1599. Uh, the first known instance in the Oxford English Dictionary is Thomas Moffat's The Silkworms and Their Flies, where he gave the memorable line, quote, Sisyphean souls, bewitched multipliers, sir, cease to pitch this newer pitched stone, unquote. So uh, Matt and I are nothing if not... Um, uh, old school and preservers of history. And uh, that is the original and, and first and correct spelling. So 
uh, be sure you you look that up um, to to get the meaning of the term. Um, and then my mom asks for help listening to it. Uh, I did uh, later call her and provide some tech support over the phone to get her it set up with her podcasting app. And I also called my grandma and helped her listen to it. I don't know if it worked for her yet or not, but I'm thinking maybe just Kyle's mom and, and grandma needing tech support might become a regular segment at our meetings. Good. Um, now, like you said, she says it's going to be lots of fun. She, since she didn't hear the, the first issue at the time, she didn't know yet that only every other issue is supposed to be fun. Right. So quantitatively, it might be majority fun, but it might not even be. Right. Uh, okay. So thanks, Mom, for leaving us a voicemail message before you even heard what it was about. That's uh, the kind of faith you look for in a parent. Yes. I bet my mom wouldn't let me join the Sco- Scooby van gang. Hopefully not. Here is our third and final voicemail message. Uh, here it is. This is from another mutual friend of ours uh, named Joel. Now, the, the audio on this is not great. I'll see how much I can fix it in post. Uh, I think he'll be able to make out most of what he says. Hi, this is Joel calling in. One of those friends guilted into listening who has had the great fortune or misfortune of dining at table with Matt and Kyle. So for the benefit of the listener of the show who may be hoping to acquire useful life hack tips from this podcast, I really just wanted to let them know that Matt and Kyle are indeed not like those great artisans and inventors of the past who have great fortune. You, you look at someone brilliant and forward thinking like Thomas Edison. They tried a ton of stuff to see what worked. Like that man made over a thousand patents. Matt and Kyle, they're, they're more the type drawings of such procrastination and indecision that I consider a great miracle that this podcast ever made it past the planning stages and into production. For their sake, I too hope the podcast is back. But for my sake, I hope it continues on in perpetuity. Finally, I would request that a podcast be devoted to the art of puppetry. I couldn't tell whether he was complimenting us or insulting us. Well, yes. The, so I guess you could hear it then. Uh, I could hear some of it. So first of all, he says he's one of the people who dined at table with us at grad school. Now, it's true. A, attentive listeners will recall that in the first issue, I mentioned uh, seeing Matt being mocked and ridiculed and called names by other people at a lunchroom table. So I guess that was Joel admitting to being one of those name callers. Uh, Disgusting. Um, He says that we are not like the great artisans and inventors of the past. For example, Edison. Now, first of all, Edison was quite the jerk. I Mm. I don't want to start controversy here and I don't want to get into ethics. But um, if you look up things about Edison, um, he was not a great guy. If, if so, if being told I'm not like Edison, uh, that's not um, too much of a diss for me. But also, Joel says, see, what sets us apart from Edison is Edison tried a bunch of things. Mm. Um, he kept trying till he got it right. Well, Matt, there are many things that people could critique um, you and me about. But I don't yes. think trying many different things and repeatedly failing is one of them. It's true. I think that is maybe the one way that we are like Thomas Edison. We just right. haven't yet figured out the, the filament that actually works. The light bulb moment. Right. right. Um, I agree with Joel that it is a miracle that uh, the first issue came out. Uh, and you notice Joel turns it around there at the end, doesn't it? Doesn't he? He says he hopes for himself. He hopes our podcast continues on in perpetuity. So thank you, Joel. Wow. Um, and, and he also requests that we do a, an issue on puppetry. That would Matt- be necessary you may know that in a previous life i was a traveling puppeteer as you must be and uh in fact my friend nathan whom we mentioned earlier uh in this conversation he was one of my fellow traveling puppeteers so maybe we could have him on and we could talk about the the subtle arts of puppetry absolutely i'm sure that i'll I'll add that here to my here's my pen i'll add that to my quote-unquote fun list of topics Right. And you might want to add him as a, as a contact. Uh, but thank you, um, Joel. That was a very, even though it was, you know, sort of a mixed med- message you were giving us there, uh, it was clearly well thought out. And uh, we did say, you know, we're open to any kind of, any kind of feedback, positive or, or negative. Right. Although, just to prevent a wave of rash criticisms in the similar vein, just because we're committed to being nice generally doesn't mean that we won't uh, we won't 
deal it back out in double portion if you leave us a nasty voicemail. Well, Matt might. I have a rule now that says don't be mean, so I can't. Uh, well, I haven't made that rule. Okay, Matt, we're only 58 minutes. Oh, I said I'm not supposed to say time. We're only about an hour in, and uh, we just got through the correspondence. Oh, my gosh. So uh, uh, I guess I'll just have to cut a whole bunch of that out in, in post. Um, and I'll also have to make this part very short. But I did say in the last issue that we would have a preface in this one about humor and our interesting and conflicted views on humor. Uh. So very briefly, I should say this. I'm sure, Matt, that you and I agree that laughter is probably immoral. Probably. So although we can't get into ethics or religion or philosophy or anything, I did just want to pull up, I'm, I'm pulling up here on my computer, um, the rule of St. Benedict, which we try to follow when possible. And uh, one of his rules is, quote, not to speak useless words and such as provoke laughter. He also... Uh, says not uh, rule 55 of, of one chapter here is not to love much or boisterous laughter. Mm. And he says, uh, coarse jests and idle words or speech provoking laughter, we condemn everywhere to eternal exclusion. And for such speech, we do not permit the disciple to open his lips. Mm. And um, finally, the tenth degree of humility, according to Benedict, is when a monk is not easily moved and quick for laughter. For it is written, quote, the fool exalteth his voice in laughter from Sirach 21-23. Ah, uh, yes, Sirach. So, uh, and this is pretty much all agreed upon in, in all the, the early Western tradition and perhaps Eastern too. I'm, I'm not as sure about that, but uh, pretty much everyone thought, yeah, laughter is, is pretty immoral. Uh, it's really focusing on uh, the wrong things. We should be focused with the serious business of life. And and it's also just unbecoming and, and seems undignified. Um, but here we're in a bit of a lose-lose situation, aren't we, Matt? Because mm. if we laugh too much, we run contrary to our own rules of decorum and right. are being immoral in the ways just described. The transcendent but, principles that keep us going. But if we aren't jocular enough, we will lose listeners. You know, and that's yes. just because our culture is obsessed with this sinful, immoral humor, laughter stuff. We live in a coarse world and we need to condescend and dirty ourselves in order to live in it. So my thought is we should meet the people where they are and then slowly work to help convert them. We should right. become all things to all people, as it were. What so a we great should, life wisdom. So we should start off in these early issues joking and laughing and seeming like we're happy. Right. And then on that front, gradually we decrease that until we reach the level where we actually want to be of, of sobriety. And we'll, we'll have carried the people along with us. They won't even notice that it's happening. It's like the frog boiling in the, in the uh, tea kettle. Right. Um, Is it boiling in a tea kettle? The, the frog boiling in the, in the, the Pot. frog slowly becoming a monk is what right. it is. Okay. So um, also, I should say, we tried in one of our early uh, issues that failed to record properly, we tried not laughing and uh, we sounded depressed. So yeah. uh, we didn't really want to let the listeners in on that. that right. We're not letting that mask slip just yet. Okay. Well, Matt, this is the part where normally we would begin our main discussion, but uh, the, the old business matters really took up this entire meeting and we probably shouldn't push our, our fresh new listeners beyond, too far beyond the hour mark. Right. I think that there's still the potential for this podcast to be perfectly self-referential, to never truly arrive at the topic at hand. And even if we were to arrive at the topic, the topic would, again, curve upon itself. So keep up the, uh, keep up the good work, listeners. And if you provide us with enough material, we could never get to the topics that we originally created this for. Um, so next issue's topic, wink will be podcasts. So if you have any feedback or input ideas, questions about podcast, Matt, well, I, I see, I shouldn't have said Matt there because I'm actually addressing our listeners. Although you're welcome to call in too, Matt. Of course I will. Uh, our phone number is 805-538-2382. 
That number again is eight zero five five, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, um, again, we will, you'll, you'll, you heard what it sounds like when we get to play your lovely voices here on the, I guess I can't say on the air on the tubes. Uh, at this point, we would also thank all of our, uh, patrons and supporters, but we don't have any yet. So, uh, uh, thanks for nothing. Thanks for, uh, don't be mean, Kyle. Uh, okay. Well, should we move to adjourn? Yes. Okay. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Seconded. Okay. There's a motion to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All, right. All opposed, say no. Okay. The motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. Great. We'll chat again. Thanks for talking about all of our errors and the things we do wrong, Matt. As always. Memento mori, my friend. Bye.